Well, good morning. It's uh, great to be with you this morning. There's not so many people here at the minute as usual. Maybe they're still in. Maybe they're still on their way. It is actually nine o'clock, isn't it? So, <laughs> so maybe that's why they're they're not here yet. If people walk in at eleven, we'll know why. But well, it's it's great to welcome you on 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 uh, Mother's Day today, and we thank the Lord for our mothers, don't we? And so it's it's great to be able to gather together on Mother's Day and to to give thanks to the Lord for that. We've just got a, a few notices this morning before we begin with a word of prayer. And the first notice is this, there is an unmanned crash um, before the sermon. So if, 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 if you have a, a little child and, and you want to take them out into the crash, then it's in the lounge. But then during the sermon, there is a supervised crash where you can drop your children off, your toddlers off, and, 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 and they'll be looked after so you can come back into the service and listen to the sermon. But if you go before the sermon, then no one will be there, but you can stay with your child. We've also got um, a few more notices. The building questionnaire. I won't ask you if you've filled it in, but, but it, it's helpful if, if, if people do fill it in. I, w- I thought about a proverb a minute ago, and it's Proverbs 11:14. It says, in the multitude of many counsellors, there is safety. And in order for the, the group there, the committee, whatever they're, they, they're called to, to make good decisions. They need lots of different opinions, lots of different voices. And so, and so if you haven't filled in the building questionnaire, I'm, I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I haven't, so <laughs> I better, I'm going to have to do it now. Now I'm standing here saying this. But if you, have, if you haven't filled it in, then please do. Um, two more notices. The, fo- uh, the men's ministry, the forge, if, if you would like to be involved with that, it's for any age um, male. So if, if you're a man and you'd like to be involved, talk to Dan or, or to Andy. And they will sign you up for that, and you, and you will find out when the, the events are on to get together with other men and to encourage each other in, in the faith. And final notice, uh, CAP, Christians Against Poverty, the course that they were going to run has been postponed uh, until the 26th of April. Now, that means that if you wanted to go but you didn't get a chance to sign up, well, now you have another opportunity. So please speak to Tim Saw um, if you would like to be signed up for that. I'm just going to pray. Then we're going to read some verses from Philippians 2, and then we'll sing our first song. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we we thank you and we praise you for your your goodness and your grace. Father, as we gather here this morning, we know that that the only reason why, why, why we can gather as your people is because you have saved us from our sin, because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Father, if it wasn't for your saving grace, we would still be without you and without hope in this world. Father, we, 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 we would never have thought about you if you had not first thought about us and draw, drawn us with cords of love uh, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you that if, if we can call you our Father this morning, it's all because of your, your sovereign mercy, all because of your free grace. And we thank you for that. Father, we, we thank you that we can gather here in safety and total freedom and, and worship you and listen to your word, Father. We, we know there are many generations of Christians, many Christians even today in our world, who, who cannot do and who could not do what we're doing today. And Father, we, we just thank you and we praise you. And we ask, Father, for your blessing upon this time, that you will work in our midst. Father, you know where, where we are with you. You know whether we're walking near to you today or, or whether we're wandering far away from the Good Shepherd. Father, we pray that each of us will, will be encouraged and, and blessed as a result of being here today. Father, that you will work among us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I'm just going to read a few verses from Philippians chapter 2. And the reason being it relates to our first song. Philippians 2 verse 9 through 11 says this. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, that's Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Now we're going to stand and sing our first song this morning, which is Your Name. Rise from 
Psalm 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I trust the ever-living one. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall plead. Enough for me that Jesus saves, this ends, ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him, he'll never cast me out. My heart is leaning on the word, the written word of God. Salvation by my Saviour's name, salvation through his blood. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I trust the ever-living one. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Shall we pray together? Our God and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come into thy holy presence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you our worship and praise. And we give you our heartfelt thanks for your grace, mercy, and love, in that you spared not your own son, but gave him up for us all. Father, we thank you that this planet is not our planet, but yours. And we pray that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God that made the worlds and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, 
who giveth to all life and breath and all things, for in him we live, move, and have our being. For whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Heavenly Father, thank you, our Lord, is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and was, which is to come, the Almighty. Holy Father, we thank you, our Lord and Saviour, has said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. And again he says, Fear not them that kill the body, but fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. I say unto you, fear him. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the gospel of Christ to the Ukrainian and Russian people. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. Lord, give help to all that seek to help the Ukrainian people. And Lord, have your hand upon the situation in this time of war. Lord, protect and be with our fellow believers in Christ in Ukraine and in Russia. For you have said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Help us, Father, to have a true and faithful heart in Christ, for you are a faithful and true God to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Emma is just about to get up, I've just, I'll, but I'll introduce her. We're, we're very blessed to have uh, Dave and Emma with us today, and we're, we're very blessed also to have a children's talk, and, and, and Emma's going to come and do that in a moment, and straight after Emma's done the children's talk, then we're going to have our children's song, which is Mighty Mighty Saviour, Savior. and after that, Andy's going to lead an interview, and we're going to watch a video together. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, I'm hoping that there might be some children who can help. I don't know if anybody... I might have to call on adults then. <laughs> oh, dear. That's like, all you have to do is be willing to hold a poster. Yeah? Do you want to come and sit along the front? I think I need about five. Otherwise, one person will have to hold five things. I might have to get Josh to come and help me. Come on, Josh. You can help. Come on, two more. Even if you're a, an adult, you can help as well. Excellent. Good. Okay. So I've got a story for you today. And this story is called One Big Adventure. I've got some pictures coming up, but I know the writing is tiny, so um, you won't need to read it. 
Do you ever dream about being a character in your favorite story? I do. I imagine what it would be like to be a brave king on a noble quest or a sailor searching for hidden treasure deep in the sea. My favorite story of all is God's story. It is full of many short stories that fit together to form one big story. God's story is true. It began before the earth was formed and it's still being written today. In God's story, he uses followers of Jesus to share his love with his people from every nation, tribe, and language. I don't have to dream about being a character in God's story. I already am. And you can be too. So let me introduce you to some of my friends around the world who have important roles in God's story. Hi, I am Sophia. My family and I live in Germany. One day, while playing in the park, we met a family from Syria. They had to flee from war to find safety in Germany. My parents invite them over for dinner every month while our parents talk. I show Alia how to play my favorite games, and she teaches me new words in Arabic. Alia's family has never learned about Jesus, so my dad invited them to study the Bible with us. My family and I are welcomers in God's big story, and we look for ways to share God's love with people from other cultures who live right here in our city. Who can come and hold welcomer for me? Yeah, thank you. So, my name is Sung Min. My family lives in South Korea. And every month we learn about a new people group, where they live, what they believe about God, and what life is like for them. And this month we are learning about the Ansari people. Mum made a spicy lentil stew. My stomach is already grumbling, I think. An Ansar favorite. Dad is helping me to make a kite to fly just like the Ansari children do. After dinner, my family gathers around our world map and prays that Ansari families will have the chance to learn about Jesus, the God who loves them. My family and I are prayers in God's big story. God uses our prayers to help bring the hope of Jesus to those who have not yet heard. Hi, I am Ariana. My family lives in Peru. When I was little, my family and I learned about a people group in the Middle East who had no Bibles or churches where they could learn about Jesus in their own language. We prayed that God would send followers of Jesus to help start a church there. The more we prayed, the more we knew that the family God wanted to send was us. So this year, we've been learning to speak the language of this people group. And soon, our family will leave Peru and move to the other side of the world to live among them and tell them about the God who loves them. My family and I are goers in God's big story. And we are leaving our home to go and live among the people who have not had the chance to learn about Jesus. Can you be a goer? So, my name is Victor. Uh, My family and I live in Nigeria, and we know a woman from our church who moved to Indonesia as a goer. She is sharing about God's love with a people group who does not know about Jesus. My family understands that she is doing important work, so we pray for her and give money every month toward her ministry. Now, she is working with a team to translate the Bible into the people's language so they can read God's word for themselves. My sister and I asked our neighbors if we could water their plants to earn extra money for the translation project. My family and I are senders in God's big story. We pray for goers and use our resources to meet their needs and fund projects that help people have the chance to learn about Jesus. Come on, Josh, can you be a sender? 
Okay, last one. Hi, I am Amira. My family and I live in Pakistan. Our family loves being a part of God's big story. We want to help other families learn how they can be a part of it too. At church, I help mum teach my class about what God is doing around the world. My father and big brother lead a Bible study with men and help them learn about God's story. And every week, our family spends time praying for different unreached people groups. We always invite other families to come and pray with us. Amira teaches her friends to pray for the nations. Amira's mom explains God's heart for the world in the Bible. Amira's dad says goodbye to goers he encouraged to go to Nepal. My family and I are mobilizers in God's big story. We want every family in our church to know about God's love for all people and to find a role in God's story. So can you be a mobilizer? Maybe can you scoot down a little bit? There we go. That's it. So do you want to be a part of God's big story too? No matter where you live or what your family looks like, there is a role for you. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe all five. God uses families just like yours to help others learn about him. And being a part of God's story is one big adventure. What a great day it will be when there are families from every people group who love Jesus. Do you hear that? God is inviting you and your family to be a part of his big story. All you have to do is say yes. So thank you very much. And maybe one day or even now, you can be one of these five things. Yeah? Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. It's our mighty, mighty Savior that we want to be telling as many people about, isn't it? And so we're going to sing about him this morning. So actions, as I always tell you, for the chorus anyway. So mighty, mighty savior you are. So what, what a mighty, mighty savior you are. You have washed away our sin. You have changed my heart within. Oh dear, I'm up on the screen. <laughs> That's new. <laughs> what a mighty, mighty savior you are. Okay, let's try it. There we go. Introduction's not very long because you've just got me on guitar. So on your feet, please.
uh, Dave and Emma to come up. Uh, there's quite a lot of people missing, and I can only assume that's a combination of two things this morning. <laughs> One more embarrassing than the other. Uh, I think there's been a lot of people who've been sick with COVID, so do be, please pray for those who've not been able to join us. Uh, but praise the Lord, they can watch and they can join us on screen, which is absolutely lovely for them. And now that they've seen the actions live on the screen, it's like a, a, an at-home aerobics uh, lesson as well for them. So that's lovely. Now, it's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to welcome Dave and Emma. Sorry, I'll talk near, near the microphone. You've got the cordless one there. That's good. Uh, we've been looking forward to them, them coming here, and um, I'm just going to introduce them a little, or let them introduce themselves to you a little bit, because there's quite a lot of new people who maybe have no idea uh, who Dave and Emma are, but there's actually been a bit of a, a long relationship with the church over the years. So why don't you tell us, for starters, who you are and what the connections are with this church? What connections have you got? Uh, so I guess my um, personal connection comes um, through my grandparents, Ken and Joyce Boothby, who um, were members of Walton for many years. And then when my parents, who are missionaries in Papua New Guinea, are on home assignment, they were also based here at Walton. So from probably about 14, that's when I became aware of Walton and the church family here. And then when I was 18 and returned back to um, the UK for... Um, longer studies, uh, being a nurse. Um, I was based here in Chesterfield, and so was a church um, member here at Walton. Um, and then later on, I guess we got, we met, um, and we got married here. Um, our flowers fell over, either on this side or this side, because they were too heavy. Um, so yeah, we lo lots of um, memories and history, um, which is wonderful. Do you have any background? Yeah, that's good. We, um, I, I grew up in Liverpool and trained um, in medicine in Sheffield, but I started work as a doctor at Chesterfield Hospital, and Emma was a student nurse at the time, and we had this kind of arranged marriage thing going on through our relatives in Papua New Guinea, so that's how the Chesterfield connection worked for me. And so you're here this morning with Joshua as well, who was actually was up on the stage earlier, but we're not going to ask you to come up. It's really lovely to have you here uh, with us. Now, what have you two been doing then for the last few years? So just, just run us through a little potted short version of what you've been doing these last few years. So we've had the privilege of being able to serve in mission work. Um, thank you. We've had the privilege of being able to serve in mission work in Papua New Guinea. And uh, we've been part of a team that's been bringing the gospel message to people groups who've not had it before, not had the Bible in their own language. And um, it's been great to be in a support role in that. So I've been a team doctor and Emma's been teaching kids at a mission school and teaching music. So a bit of a career shift from nursing to, to music teaching. Last year, we got to do something a bit different and do a succumbent and work in a Christian hospital and school in a, in a more remote part of Papua New Guinea. Okay, that, that's really good. Now, for a lot of us, I think we fall into thinking that you've got, the norm, you've got your normal Christians here, right? And then you've got the missionaries, and they're, some, they're somewhere up there. Am I right? We, a little bit, we feel that a little bit. So, Emma, tell me. Do, is that true? Do you need to be special in some way to, to be doing I mean, you've come from a family of people who've been doing this. So do you need to be in some ways different? No. <laughs> talk, which is really, really helpful. But, yeah. but just tell us then, did you always want to serve God abroad? And if so, why? In some ways, yes. Um, because I, as growing up, in the environment that I did, I was very much aware of the needs um, all over the world. But I also have to be honest and say, um, you know, when I became, when I was an adult, even in my university years, you know, you start to kind of maybe um, not get distracted in necessarily a bad way, but life happens and you start thinking, well, actually, you know, I can serve God here in the UK just as I can serve him anywhere. And that is true. Um, but I know that God plants things in your heart, desires, and that kind of happened to us, and it wasn't going away. Mm. Um, so going back to you, do you need to be special? No. Do we need to be available? Yes. Right, that's really good. Do you want to pass that mic over to Dave? Because 
Dave, what, what about with you then? So at what point then for you did you decide that serving God overseas was something that you wanted to do? I, I think probably growing up actually being exposed to stories of how God had worked in the lives of other people. And just reading through the Bible, God uses ordinary people who are weak enough to lean on him. We think about someone like Moses, who was a, a shepherd in the desert. He, he was a murderer. Um, he couldn't speak in public. Um, God uses all kinds of people. And he does use talented people. We've got Daniel and Joseph there in the Bible. But uh, we've got many people who were just everyday people going about their normal jobs, a bunch of fishermen um, who, who changed the world in, in, in the first century. And sometimes if, if we have a lot of skills and gifts, that can be um, a source of pride and, and a stumbling block and something that causes us not to re rely on God and, and others. So anyone can be involved in, in mission. Yeah, and, and did, so, so you studied medicine up in Sheffield. Did that play a role? W was there an intention behind that at the time? Or was it after that that you started to think about going overseas? Yes, I think so. I think medicine has long gone alongside gospel work, and we, we, we see that through, throughout the, the church's history. And I did intentionally want to, to study medicine to explore whether that could be used in missions. So I had some time in um, DR Congo in a gap year before school, uh, before university, looking at that, and then a student placement in Papua New Guinea. Um, and just that kind of gradually feeling a way into, like, could I, could I do something like this? Um, is, is this possible? Right. And as I understand it then, so the two of you, um, over the summer, you're going to be doing some things still with New Tribes Missions. Is that right? Okay. And then after that, you're actually thinking of some changes that are going to happen. We're going to just watch a little video now, and then I'm going to ask you a few more questions about that. So we've got this little video. So if we want to play that up on the screen. Are you a younger healthcare professional who's interested in global health and mission? Have you ever wondered where in the world God might have you serve? CMF's Global Track is an 18-month experiential program that runs alongside your work or study, and that gives you an opportunity to explore some of these bigger questions. I think whatever point in the journey you are in considering uh, overseas health work and mission, um, the track can be really helpful. It was an amazing course which spurred me on to pursue what I thought like, God's been telling me for many years. The Global Track has really opened my eyes and broadened my mind as to how big and diverse the world is and how big God's heart and mission is. The track is composed of the following elements. Face-to-face -face day seminars in London, a residential program for a weekend at All Nations College, online webinars, you also complete assignments. You are assigned a personal mentor who walks with you through the journey. I was paired with a mentor in my locality who gave me lots of book recommendations and we met up regularly to discuss questions and pray. And you'll have the opportunity to go on an overseas trip with other members from the track. In the past, the places that we've had trips go to are Sierra Leone, the Thai-Burmese border, India, Nepal, Uganda, the Gulf. I recently returned from the United Arab Emirates where I was part of a group visiting a Christian hospital and it was just amazing. I went with five other trackers to the Mela refugee camp in Thailand. We led a teaching program over a week. These trips are a great opportunity to experience in practice a lot of the things that we learn in theory throughout the rest of the global track. Maybe you've been put off the idea or the sense of calling of serving God internationally because of some of the recent challenges in the field of global health. One of the great things about the global track is the opportunity to really engage with issues of global injustice, suffering and poverty. Medics are the heavy artillery of Mission Army. Um, and we've got such a key to going into closed communities with the skills we have. The global track has really helped me to be more aware of culture and looking through cultural lenses. There is a common misconception that Christian mission is about the West going to the rest. An emphasis of our learning on the global track is that today, missions are from everyone to everywhere. 
If you're interested to know more, then why not visit the global section on the CMF website and you'll get more details there about how to apply. Global track, just where in the world might God lead you? Okay, so, so you've given us that little video to watch. <laughs> that's, that's really helpful, but you're gonna have to explain a few things. So, so right, a few questions to go together. So you need to explain, so what, what is your thinking? How does this play into your thinking about what lies ahead? Um, it's CMF, which is Christian Medical Fellowship. So how does that fit with Emma? <laughs> uh, so just tell us a little bit about what the two of you have been thinking about what you'd like to be getting involved in over the next however long. Yeah, so we have always said in some ways we want to be used by God in a um, cross-cultural, global kind of way. Um, if that's a desire we've had in our hearts. So this is kind of still going down that track. Where do I fit into this? Um, Dave will uh, speak a bit more about CMF. Um, so last time we were here on a Wednesday evening, I shared that I've been doing some voluntary administra administrative work at the church, and I'd encouraged you um, to appreciate your administrator. Um, well, since then, I've been um, interviewed for the operations manager job at our church in Sheffield, and I got the job. So that's a great provision, and I'm doing that voluntarily at the moment, um, but in September, I'll be um, employed by the church to do that. The thing that about that excites me as a little sidetrack is that the world is coming to us. So we're no longer necessarily going to Papua New Guinea um, regularly, um, but our church has a huge amount of asylum seekers, different people from around the world, and it's just a, um, an amazing privilege to serve them in, from an administrative way. I guess in, in Emma's talk earlier, we saw different ways we can be involved in mission, and that can often have a different kind of focal point at different parts in our lives. Sometimes there's a season for going, there's a season for praying. And that last group, the mobilizers, um, putting this story of God's heart for nations out there and helping people think through their part in that um, is something that I'm, I'm drawn to, particularly working with doctors, nurses, students in that. Uh, at a formative stage in their lives. So I've been volunteering for a few years with the Christian Medical Fellowship, and they've um, approached me and asked if I'd come and work with them in their global department to teach on courses like the, the Global Track, um, to do training, to support people who are serving other parts of the world. So to give you an example, Ollie and Zoe are from our local neighborhood in Sheffield, and they've just gone out to serve in Peru for three years. So we did some mentoring and met up regularly before they left, and now we continue to meet over Zoom because we can do that now um, and, and continue to support them in that role. That's fantastic. That's, that's really helpful. Um, we could carry on for, for ages. But can I just ask you just briefly, what can we pray for you? And I'll pray for you now. We're still in transition between Papua New Guinea, going back to Papua New Guinea and trying to start to um, just set up life in Sheffield. So that would be a huge thing for you to pray for and for Josh um, just continuing in his school. Um, but that will continue to be an encouragement to people. Yeah, we plan to be back uh, for me for two months from, from June and Emma and Josh coming out in the summer holidays back in Papua New Guinea. So I'll be um, the sole doctor in the medical clinic serving that church planting team during that period. So just pray for strength and wisdom, for grace, and for a good final chapter in, in PNG to be able to say our goodbyes and, and close up. It's going to be good, but it's going to be hard too. Um, and then for us as we move into new areas of ministry based in the UK. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for, for that. You can sit down. I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you now. Father, we do thank you for Dave, for Emma, for Joshua. We thank you for this family who have, uh, who have gone abroad, who have served you in difficult and um, obscure and remote situations. We thank you for the blessing that they've already been to your people, for those church planters and missionaries that they have helped to support out in Papua New Guinea. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'll give them wisdom as they think about what lies ahead. Lord, bless them in the, in the plans that they make. Uh, Lord, that they may continue to be really useful to your people. Lord, we pray for these two new roles that they're uh, in your will, Lord, that they're, they're going to take up over this, uh, this next year. 
We pray for Emma as she, as she serves the church there in Sheffield. We pray for that community of asylum seekers and uh, people from various nations who've been coming to their church. Lord, uh, we, we pray that you would continue to give Emma and, and Dave and Joshua big hearts for the nations, for, for people who are coming there, to, to have them hear the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the, the summer as well, uh, for, for Dave as he goes back out to Papua New Guinea uh, to support those church planting teams. Lord, help him uh, as, he, as he works there, uh, supporting them with, me with medical support. And that we do pray for the family, that you would help them in this transition. Lord, help them as they, uh, as they settle, as they put down roots. Uh, we pray for Joshua as he, as he gets stuck into school, Lord, that you'll, you'll help him to to make lots of friends and to be a good witness for you there uh, in his school. Uh, and Lord, for them, for them as a family, Lord, we commend them to you, we lift them up and we commend them to you and pray, Lord, for your blessing uh, in the road that lies ahead for them. Lord, that they would trust you every step of the way. We ask this in your name. Amen. Well, we're going to have our reading now. Caroline is going to come up and she's going to read to us from Luke 24, Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 36. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why, why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name of all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Sorry, you are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. <clears throat> but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. In a moment, uh, Dave's going to come and, and preach to us from those verses of Scripture. Um, before that we do that, we're going to sing our next song, which is King of Kings, Majesty. And, and as this song is, as we're singing this song, uh, the, the children will, will go out to Sunday Club. And if you have a child you'd like to drop off at Cresh, then, then now's the time during this song to, to drop them off at the lounge.
if you have one of the church Bibles, it'd be great to have that in front of you as we look at these verses from the end of Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. So I hope that as we study this passage together, you'll be excited to see how Jesus summarizes the message of the Old Testament scriptures and shows us that the good news about the Messiah is a message for all nations. The book of Luke was written by a medical doctor who was one of the disciples and an eyewitness of Jesus' life and teaching. Luke went on to write the book of Acts, and both books have strong themes about mission and how the gospel message spread throughout the Roman Empire in the first century. We're at the end of the book, just after the point where Jesus has been raised from the dead and is appearing to his disciples. Firstly, to the women at the garden tomb, to Simon Peter, and then to Cleopas and his friend on the road to Emmaus. On that journey, Jesus opened up the scriptures and explained how they point to him. Cleopas and his friend are so excited at understanding the message and meeting the risen Jesus that they rush to tell the rest of the disciples who are hiding away from the authorities in the upper room. And just as they get there, Jesus appears to his disciples. In the 40 days between Jesus' resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and then subsequently the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, a remarkable change happens in the lives of his disciples. They go from fear to boldness, from despair to having a sense of purpose, from fleeing the authorities to be willing to give their lives for what they believe. In this passage, we will see how their lives are turned around by meeting the risen Jesus in verses 36 to 44, by understanding the scriptures, verses 45 to 47, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, verses 48 and 49. Firstly, meeting the risen Jesus. Let's read from verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. So as the disciples were still talking with Cleopas and his friend about the news of Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to them. It was natural for the disciples to have doubts, to wonder what they were seeing and whether they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus shows them the evidence Evidence of his suffering on the cross, in his wounds, in his hands and feet, and evidence of a real physical body, real physical resurrection body that could eat. Lee Strobel was a law graduate and an investigative journalist for the Chicago Tribune. As an atheist, he was skeptical about his wife's conversion to Christianity, and he set out to disprove the resurrection. But the more he looked into the evidence, the more convinced he became of this fact that changed history. His story is told in the movie, The Case for Christ. I think one of the compelling arguments for the resurrection is the remarkable change in the lives of his disciples and their willingness to go on to die for their belief in what they knew to be true. How about you? Are you convinced of the truth of the resurrection of Jesus? If you're still weighing up what you believe and have doubts, then this is a great question to look into. Secondly, they understood the scriptures, verses 45 to 47. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. These verses provide a wonderful summary of the message of the Old Testament scriptures. It's all about Jesus. 
The Bible is one big story of redemptive history. There's a narrative that runs right through from Genesis to Revelation about a promised rescuer, the Messiah, who would come to bring salvation through his death and resurrection. That through him, we can find forgiveness for sin and be reconciled to God. But this message is not just for the people of Jerusalem or for the nation of Israel. It's for all nations. Through the Old Testament scriptures, we see prophecies that foretold Jesus' life and death. We see illustrations and shadows of what's to come. He's the descendant of Eve who will crush the head of the serpent but be bruised as he does that. He's the Lamb of God who gives his life as a sacrifice for others. But the message that God is redeeming a people for himself from every nation is there throughout the Bible. According to Jesus, the books of the law, that's the first five books written by Moses, the prophets and the Psalms teach that this message is for all nations. To give you some examples, you can see it in the promises to Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 3, that through one of his descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. You can see it in the Psalms, Psalm 67, where the psalmist prays, may the peoples praise you, may all the peoples praise you. As you can see, it's in the prophets as well. Isaiah 49 verse 6, speaking about the suffering servant of the Lord. Is it too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and to bring back those of Israel I have kept? I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that's the non-Jews, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. God's plan from the beginning was for his salvation to reach to the ends of the earth, for people from every tribe and nation and language to be rescued and worshipping him. As you read through the narrative of the Bible, you can see how people from other nations are welcomed into his family. There's Rahab, who's from the land of Canaan. Ruth, who's from Moab, a country next to the um, nation of Israel. Naaman is an army commander from Syria. When Jesus comes into the world, wise men from the east come to worship him. He goes to Samaria. He goes to the region of Galilee, to the Gentiles. And even at his death, an Italian centurion from Europe says, surely this was the Son of God. And as Luke's narrative continues in Acts, we'll see how people from all over the known world are gathered at Pentecost, how they come to believe, and how the gospel message spreads through the region. This is what God is doing. This is his mission. So where are you at with understanding the scriptures? It was Jesus who opened the disciples' mind to be able to understand them. We need to be getting to know all of God's word to be fully equipped to live for Christ. Sometimes we stick to the New Testament and Psalms because, let's face it, they are perhaps the easier parts of God's word to get into to, to understand. But we'll benefit from studying the whole of God's word, whether that's in our personal reading, in our small groups as a church, or Sunday by Sunday as we meet together. Are there parts of the Bible you've never looked at? What practical steps might you take to see the message of Jesus, his death and resurrection, and the gospel hope for the nations throughout the scriptures. So what changed the disciples? Well, firstly, they met Jesus. They met the risen Jesus. Secondly, they understood the scriptures. And thirdly, they were changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verses 48 and 49. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. The disciples had witnessed the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, but to be able to go out and be bold witnesses as they proclaimed the message to others, they would need help. They couldn't do it on their own. They were fearful. But the Holy Spirit was sent at Pentecost to give them strength and courage for the task, to give gifts to the church to be used for building up the body and to help them write the rest of the scriptures and to understand them too. We can't do this mission 
in our own strength. But with the help of God's Spirit, anything is possible. As I studied this passage, I found the words of verses 46 and 47 surprising. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. For me, it was surprising to see such a clear summary of the message of the Bible, yet a summary that includes mission, that includes God's heart for all the nations. Christ died and rose again. Through repentance, we can be forgiven for our sin. This gospel message is for all. At the start of our service, Emma shared some different ways in which we can be involved in God's mission. Can I be asking you, can I encourage you to be asking, where do I fit in? As you do that, it will help, be a help to have clarity in your mind about the biblical basis for mission and how this story of God's heart for the nations runs through the Bible. We've brought something for you today. We've printed up a little um, seven-day Bible reading challenge that will take you through key verses that explore the theme of mission in the Bible, but also show how you can be involved through welcoming, through, give, through praying, through going, through sending, and through mobilizing. So please take one of these as you leave. There's some on the coffee table on the way out, but there's also some on the display table just near the tea and coffee. Just a practical thing you could do to see for yourself through God's word what is the biblical basis for mission and how we can be involved in practical ways. I want to conclude by allowing some of our Papua New Guinean brothers and sisters in Christ to encourage you. So over the last five years, as you've supported us and the work of New Tribe's mission, and going a lot further back than that actually for this church, our team in Papua New Guinea has been able to bring this gospel message to the people of Wantakia. They were able to hear God's word taught clearly in their language for the first time. They were able to read it for themselves. They were able to read for the first time in their lives, learning to, to read and then to read God's word. Over a three-month period, they met about five times a week to hear the key stories from the Old Testament that show us how God created us, the problem of sin, our need for rescue, and what the promised Messiah would be like. They heard about the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, and many of them put their trust in him, and a church was born. They went on to hear how that message went out to other places in the book of Acts, and now they want to encourage others to think about their involvement in God's big story. Let's see the video. Hi, ni me, America Mare Krokuna Malamigi, Iraichi. Tava PNC is a missionary, BJ, Sara, Michak, Sara. Yaga Labu Mother never made a child, Chamigal. Namely, missionary Mura Murabium, no, no, I'm worrying. Yagumre Yaga Lamabe, Chabra, Nemanta Chabra, Yaga Labuna, Umran, Amanta Chabra, Yaga Labuna, Maria, Umranum. Yo <laughs> Crocuna, my lamorana, or of Mara, Nevula la Massa Marabo, Nevula la Pada Nana, with the Bara de Marane. Crocuna, my lamorana, came a gimme in tea, Nem Gumorana, see, Porapo Marabo, Motuara, Sasa Trangia <laughs> 
Poyi, Miss Nari, Man, Mother, or Mandaja, Punu, no woke me up, Mandaja, Madame Missy, you want no more lay all with the work, Mother Jay. Lorenido. Tang and Ambassa Mara de Marane. Lorenido, who may so be lovely? Quote, cut a rival letter. Tis as it lay a rainbow. Parian, said ever the Mullaramin. Tang as I Yara man, eh, papa, get him at the Borabum, a nebula, another padanta, ink savendro. Sadegrebo, yet when the Marilla Ralabuna, the man at Abapo, we are in the chee to Marido. Polir na man at the menu. A paretna crubso by Chere Yobuta. A cotele rala, por of Maranebula, la Massamara would wagon a rala de blue crubs and anatara. Tanti Piera, Tantara. A Sarama Tarana, we might not touch a guru. A word. Quarter at a Ramona Udanta, Quarter la Curie, Internet letter, you women tachera, Tragnadata, Udovayala. You when they marry who with Ragni Chelly? Serebra named Red Ragni of Dai, Ramona de Moranum. You when they marry men, Missin Aria Simana, Catantachi Cri? Arena Matunono. Polly Rasoblavia and a polyer, a town of Cusum Malabra and the Po, Mogin and Marab and the Po, Yay Serpa Maribata via Chelero. Sarasale, I won a crubus paria crubus over the world rata. I yes, you are a little town of Nayantara. Walking crack, I bred brew, Mamma Tantonono. Cotel le grinta naked and natural as a man and a tamatono. Saratna Jesus la womiabi, Cavayo women, the Mucrocuna mala, America maremig. Nampa Samara Nebula let them to make a bite, but now the passa. Hi, they are yeti. Let's pray together. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. We thank you for the amazing message of the gospel and how your plans to rescue and save us were revealed through the Bible and through history. We thank you that this message is for all nations, including ours, and we pray that you would open our eyes to understand the scriptures and to grasp your heart for the world and know how we can respond and be part of your mission. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to sing our final uh, hymn together now, which is really based on all that we've been, heard, been hearing this morning. And it's tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. And we'll stand to sing. Great. 
Well, just before I read uh, some verses from God's Word as we finish, uh, there are refreshments that will be served at the end, so please do stay for a cup of coffee and speak to somebody. And also, I, I think it would be good just to say that we've been reminded this morning, haven't we, that there's something that we can all be doing uh, for the glory of Jesus Christ and world missions. We can be goers, we can be mobilizers, prayers, givers, um, and, 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 and some of those other things as well. And, and the, the, the challenge that I feel is, is, is I know I can walk out here this morning and do nothing. And, we, and that's, that's something we, we, we might do. Let's not do that. Let's actually walk out of here, yes, with a challenge, but with a desire to do something. Um, if, if, if you want to want to think more about that, Dave and Emma would love to speak to you and encourage you in that. So please speak to them. These are, this is what Jesus said. He said, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit." teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen.